I think yeah. I, I think I heard that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you never corrected me. Like I, I was like Caleb Smith, Caleb Smith, and <laughs> I heard it everywhere. Like even people around me were saying Caleb Smith all the time, and, and you 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 never corrected me. This is like I, I find it kind of funny. I'll tell everyone else. That's like that's. I mean, I, I, people Julian, everybody called you Julian Canab, right? Nap, nap. Like oh, just... I, I know, especially Americans, they are mortally afraid of case. <laughs> like they don't want to pronounce case like night. Like how yeah. do you know? With, with, you, you know when the the, the game um, in, in the nineties, the game Jedi Knight. You know when that yeah. came out, yeah, 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 Jedi, yeah, yeah. like Jedi Knight, so, Jedi Academy. Yeah, pe people talked about Jedi Knight so much in Germany, and so many kids here they thought it was like a Jedi Knight, like not a Jedi Day, but a Jedi oh, Knight. Wow. <laughs> because Americans or even like you English guys, you, you don't pronounce case. What's, no. what, what's up with that? But you, you just don't pronounce it. That's how you meant to say it. It's just like a, it's, <laughs> yeah, the, the letters extra. It's like, yeah, not nice to have, but we, we don't really use the K. You're kind of in the wrong. You, you definitely just don't say the K. It's, it's, it's also, it's probably <laughs> German's fault that English yeah. is like this. So <laughs> well, everything's German's fault. Okay. So the, the easiest way, I've said this before, the easiest way to, to imagine how to pronounce my last name is to just replace the K with a Q. You know? Ah. And a U. Like no, Q M A B, Knab. Yeah, dude, knab. that was so close. Yeah, that's knab. perfect. Knab, In, not not Kunab. That's just. Well, <laughs> Australians always have a U afterwards. No, but but in this case they don't. Well, Otherwise, don't, you would. I'm you would sorry, I'm Q. changing your name. Sorry. So it's just like a Knab. knab. Yeah, it, it basically means like boy. I can't believe you're getting means... lectured how to pronounce things by a German. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hello and welcome everybody to Everyday Spelling and Pronunciation number 168, <laughs> your favorite most deceptively named bi-weekly legacy podcast apparently. Uh, Today's show is brought to you by John Vanilla, who upgraded his Talia tier to Eternal Witness tier. Hey, Talia is even dying in our, in our Patreon tiers. <laughs> <laughs> and Kurt Schultz, who joined our Patreon. If you never support the running of the show directly, you can support us on patreon.com slash everydayeternal. Caleb, I'm so happy to have <laughs> Eli Goings here with us tonight. Me uh, too, we, Mr. Kunab. Well, thank you very much. We traded Kalam, uh, no, no, we traded Kai, Kai Zavatari out, who also, I, I'm surrounded by people with fake names. Like, <laughs> Kai is another person who, whom I, I had known by a different name for like 10 years or something before he was like, yeah, changing my name. Like, am I the only person not changing his name? E Eli, have you ever changed your name? No, but I will change my name. One, I'm going to change my last name uh once because i got married and my wife and i were going to turn my middle name into our last names but <laughs> I was, we're sorry, not i thought you were going to say you're going to swap names <laughs> no <laughs> but uh we don't want to do that until we get like a permanent visa somewhere because we really don't want to deal with name changes while we're trying to like you know deal with oh, passports God. and stuff it sounds really awful you know what happened to my colleague at work mm. she got married Mm -hmm. And they had initially agreed to both keep their last names. Mm -hmm. And as they are getting married, when they do like the civil whatever thingy yeah. at, yeah, they, her her future or I guess soon to be husband revealed that he's actually taking her last name. And of course to her, it was like the super emotional moment, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then immediately after... She was like, oh my God, we booked our Bali holiday like with your last name. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, gotta make some calls. Yeah, it's just like at work when when we have clients and they misspell their name, like even if they just misspell their last names or something, sometimes it's like, okay, like for example, Turkish Airlines, they're the most, most badass about this. They're like, changed one letter on your name. Sorry, you have to cancel and book again. And hopefully it's going to be the same price. So, so she was like, oh my fucking God, what did you just do? But turns out it wasn't kind of easy fix. But yeah, ch yeah, changing your name can bring a lot of problems, I guess. Yes. Cool. So wh wh why, actually, why is, why is Kai not here? Did, did we just figure that Eli is going to be better? Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you messaged me this afternoon, right? What have we got Eli on the cast? And I just like, thought, yeah, who's Kai? the best Doomsday player we can get to replace him with? <laughs> <laughs> Look, how, how good is your Doomsdaying, Eli? I... Goblin Recruiter is basically yeah, <laughs> Doomsday with more cards, more or less cards, and I'm decently good at casting Goblin Recruiter, so I guess I'm a better Doomsday player then. So how good yeah. are you actually at casting Goblin Recruiter? Because everybody, if, if you're not tuning in right now and you, you're wondering who is this guy, Eli is actually, you've been on our cast before, I'm pretty sure, and yeah. we talked about Goblins, and you are, I want to say you're the go-to guy for Goblins, right, these days? Tend to be, yeah. Um, I... 
I've been playing a decent bit of both, you know, Turbo Muxus and File Goblins past couple of weeks, uh, past couple of months. Um, yeah. And I don't know, I've been doing really well. Um, <laughs> One might say that, right? But where exactly are you from? Uh, so I'm from New Jersey, but uh, I live in Scotland currently. And Oh, wait, so you're American? Yeah. Oh, uh, for some reason, I thought you were British. I'm so sorry. I well, was actually going <laughs> to... The <laughs> accent kind of gives it away. <laughs> yeah. I was no, gonna, I'm going to ask you Glasgow. about the, the lyrics. I've been in Glasgow my whole life. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Very good. <laughs> Oh, we, we just lost every single Scottish fan. Jesus yeah, Christ. Yeah, I know. Did we really? Did we really? Oh, my God. Do, what are the lyrics of the Scottish National Anthem? Uh, I, no. I just asked, like, when we did a mic test. Wrong way down a two-way street. That's a that's a Lemmy joke for the Scottish fans out okay. there. <laughs> cool. <laughs> All five of them? Awesome. Shout yep. out to you guys. Cool. We tried to figure out what the lyrics to the English National Anthem were when we were doing a mic check, but neither Caleb nor, nor I did really know it. And then I looked them up, and they were the most pathetic lyrics I've ever seen in a National Anthem. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll stamp that with a seal of approval. It's, it's awful. <laughs> mm. Send him victorious, happy and glorious. <laughs> anyway, he anyway moving swiftly onwards. God, and Jesus. ever give us cause. <laughs> it sounds almost like a bad pop song or something. Okay, anyway. It is. Eli, for anyone that doesn't know about you, why don't you give us a bit of a brief history? Because like, you are the go-to Goblins guy, but you played Goblins for a very long time, basically, right? Yep. Uh, started, I built the deck in 2016, kind of finished it across a decent stretch of time and really got into just relentlessly playing it through 2016, <laughs> 2017, 2018. And then once I graduated college in 2018 is when I started like my channel and basically started out of spite because I was tired of people playing it badly. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I, you, like, you, were, you were going up against the other guy. Like, the, that's you? Oh, well, uh, the, Goblin okay, Lecky. So and then it was like Turn One Goblin Lecky. And I there, thought like, yeah, you, you yeah, yes. were fighting. Wow, I'm impressed you you know this. So, so Turn One Lecky. Uh, I like drama. Who liked to stream on Twitch. He's a he's a friend. He, JPR, he won an SAG Classic in like 2017, I want to guess. And, or maybe earlier than that. It was like the first like big tournament that, God, that Goblins had won in quite a long time. And so he kind of became like the go to guy for a while. But then he, he, he would stream, but not that often. So as far as like making goblins content goes, I do think there, that he kind of passed the torch to me. There, there wasn't like a, a competition. Um, uh, I, I guess there was. Well, like, it just you just ended up victorious. Yeah, and sure, ever yeah. glorious. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, basically since 2018, I've been playing the deck pretty consistent. I did take a year off this past year after i finished grad school but i'm back now i've been streaming once one or two times yeah mostly once a week i'm like in the magic online creator program now you know they stopped signups for that yeah yeah i know they got bombarded with uh yeah applications way more than they expected it basically means you have forever free uh landing possibilities or something right you, you can just like play whatever you want yes but there's that hard there, there's downsides i'm not i'm not sure what i'm actually allowed to <laughs> talk about <laughs> but like it's not they don't, they're not really you're not getting like a bunch of free money is <laughs> and nobody's talking about money like but just having well, full access to all of magic yes you do you, like, do you do have an all access account yes except for like i guess rick the first leader that, that's just like the one day they give you <laughs> yeah. oh not rick yeah <laughs> yeah and there's, cer there's certain restrictions about like what events you can play in and that sort of thing on that account so like but you, you cannot play in challenges uh, you can play in challenges. Okay. But not, not PTQs. But not the QP events. You have a loaded account, but the downside is you're only allowed to play bean control decks. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> so, yes. If re Calum's looked at my Twitter recently. I mm -hmm. have been playing these bean control decks because I wanted to... Oh, God, another one. I mean, I wanted... that's actually why we got well, rid of Kai. You know, no, Kai okay. wanted to Here's talk about bean control all no, 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 day no. long. So we're like, I... Kai, you got to Dusseldorf and whatever you want to do that. Executed. Hold on, hold on. I hate these decks. I hate them so much. Of course you would say that now. That's what and Kai said. No, no, you trust me. I hate <laughs> those decks. Seriously. I, I really do. And I wanted to just, I wanted to get my hands on them to understand how to play against them better more than anything. You, you know, that that's what people say when they get like online cheats for like, I don't know, Counter-Strike. They're like, no, no, <laughs> I wanted to see how they do it so I can like play against it in a better way. You're right. Force of Will with Beanstalk is cheating. Thanks, Julian. You're correct. <laughs> Pretty much. I yes. Yeah, so I, I mean, just this afternoon, I was testing with a friend where I was on Beanstalk and he was playing goblins, and we like figured out some stuff. And um, 
Yeah, so I, it I've does been help playing. a ton if you can get through it. Yeah, it's it's not like look the these leagues take like I play I played three leagues with Beanstalk Control now, and like two with the Yorion version, and then one with the four. Oh color, my god! The four <laughs> How many days did it take you? It, like <laughs> the leagues take like three hours. They're <laughs> yeah for the, like the first match or something. This is just it's just, I couldn't do it. It's like very, at least not for a league. Like I literally had a, I went to bed last night. I was playing last night, and I literally went to bed with a pounding headache because I was playing four <laughs> color control at like two in the morning. It was it was not great. I started a league with the uh, the rug beans thing with like Eris oh, yeah. something, mm -hmm. and I got through two matches. Then I played a mirror and just dropped. Like I was oh, two yeah. one, oh, the, but the I very, just couldn't do a mirror. The very like, first match I played of the Bant Yorian beans, which is like the most dirt league deck imaginable. Like so, Julian, you'll you'll hate this if you haven't seen this deck. It's oh, uh, I've seen plenty of it. <laughs> you, this is a uh, GTL's deck from the showcase. Uh, mm. It's for Uro, a Yorian, and those are all the ways you have to win the game. There's no fourth Aerolingos. There's no Solitude. I added Solitudes very quickly because I was like, nah, -uh. <laughs> no Endurance, <laughs> no nothing. No Triumph of Saint Catherine. It's just Uro or Yorian, and you have to like. Like and then the first match I played was a complete mirror match where I lost game one to decking myself. <laughs> yeah, God. that happens. That happens quite a bit actually. That's what the Italians told me. Like when yeah. when Beanstalk first came up, I think um, what's his name again? Two, uh, I, I'm so bad with names right now. 2015, he won GP Lel, with miracles and days and mentor. Oh, um, Claudio Minani. Yeah, Claudio. Yeah. Claudio told me that like that that's a very serious consideration, and he was like considering adding uh, endurance to the deck so he could yeah. just like stop himself from decking. Yeah, because it's just like you can't. It's not even that you have a choice because you just every game action you take draws a card. Once you have like three bean stocks in play, it's like okay, my deck is cantrips, five mana plus spells, and uro. That's the entire deck. Like so, I'm, you, I'm, you I'm can't at... do anything. <laughs> I'm looking at the deck list right now because actually let's talk about the deck. We we, we had it further down in the show notes, but we can mm -hmm. actually skip ahead right to it. J Jeff Lynn, JTL, the famous creator of Blue White Tempo for like the people born before the war will remember. Fathom was... expert. <laughs> exactly, exactly, dude. We, you know, at some point we should do like a history episode of Legacy. Mm. It's just like this goes back to like 2007, 2008, and was basically the biggest, the biggest talk in town, yeah, the biggest drama. Pi meter for the win. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Pi. Four meter, five meter. That's, that's yeah, it, that, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, Fathoms here was a real legacy deck card. And some <laughs> people might say it still is somewhere mm. out there. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that deck list. JTL, uh, first place. You already mentioned some of the dark cards. I want to mention four copies of Ground Seal. I mean, I've seen Ground Seal here and there lately, but why exactly are we playing four Ground Seals? I actually love this. Like, I want to give any excuse to myself to take the piss out of these kind of decks, but four Ground Seal in like when you're playing a showcase challenge and expecting to face lots of reanimates and animate deads, I think is pretty cool, actually. Yeah, the whole <laughs> format is like, it's like 20% Scaminator decks. So, yeah. and this also stops Unlicensed Hearse, which is like a three or four of main deck in Moon Stompy. And Wait. it also stops in the post war games, it stops the surgicals that kill every single one of your win conditions. Oh, so this is like a preemptive protection spell as well, right? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, grounds it. Dude, I, I, I want to see somebody like, what's like a super graveyard dependent deck? Like, I don't know, like something that really goes hard on targeting the graveyard other than like Rescaminator. And uh, then like, then, then they... It's, oh, it's good against lands. I had this come up where they can't loam anymore. I guess stuff in a breakfast as well. It's just like another thing. It's actually very like good against Goblins from Painter. Just well read it. Like, Ooh, that's uh, so annoying. Oh, yeah, uh-huh. But that card is overall just annoying and it draws a card. Yeah, and it draws a yeah. card. You well, wouldn't play if it didn't draw a card. Yeah, I, yes. I think quite every, like, every card in this deck is just like... Does it trigger Beanstalk or does it have value with your end? Like your, I, I did find, so I switched to the non Yorian version and because Cypher. it was taken. Yeah, yeah, good point. Uh, it was taken, you know, so long to play the games and it got kind of miserable rather quickly. But I will say the the Yorian version, you do feel the lack of consistency, but Yorian itself is really strong in this deck because just like cast Yorian, trigger Beanstalk once or twice, flicker Beanstalk flicker ground seal it's like a draw seven okay so so basically the way i've always viewed this this yorian decks is usually when they get to get yorian and run it out not just like in a emergency situ situation where they need a blocker but they can like deploy it in a controlled way the game is basically over unless you have like some kind of strategic supremacy where it doesn't really matter how many cards they draw which is like rare 
Yeah, so, it lets them play even more like kind of re- recklessly with their removal. It's just like you can sword the first thing rather than like having to save it for a later threat. You can like throw a force will at a creature. You can two two fawn yourself a couple of times in the fair matchup because you know that you have this end game where your own is going to come and like pull yeah. you ahead when you both run out of stuff. Yeah, and I think my my kind of take on these beanstalk control decks is bean like the they're they're actually sort of analogous they're like cloud post decks with force of will and source of plowshares um, Ooh, okay okay and your end game is like leveraging yorian and, and just like drawing all these cards and yeah it, it, making a land drop for like it's the like first once it turns. once it reaches a certain amount of material in play like just raw cards it becomes this sort of arbitrary engine where you can outpower anybody because you can go you, like like Lauren reveal is insane this deck because it's like a five mana draw five um that also fixes your mana when you need it to because this deck is kind of wonky mana like it's it's like weirdly short on blue sources um i i found like you know you you're this is two basic forests there's two savannas you've got the uh green white so it's effectively three savannas and one of them is tapped two caracas um basic planes like the four wastelands so like there's a lot of non-blue sources in this deck and it, i definitely had some like amusingly like hilariously bad hands of like a triome ta- uh tap land wasteland caracas and a stifle <laughs> <laughs> nice yeah that's the one of stifle and the one of spare pierce that i saw you know yeah. stifle we, we, we talk about it almost every cast just because i love the card so much it's just it keeps showing up like as a one-off as a two-off sometimes even as a three-off and I just realized there's a oh my god, Sots of Plowshares has to print as a Fallout artwork. There's yeah. like this this robot from Fallout 4. I don't remember the name right <laughs> now. How many printings are there of Sots of Plowshares? We, we need like many. a running count or something. Yeah, Is I'll, it I will over check or under 20? It's uh, over, over 20. Easy. Easily over. over 20. Easy over. All right, let's see. 30? <laughs> mm, I don't think it's 30. Have you seen the Fallout Tomoglyph, Julian? Oh, wow. Uh, no, I have not. I, <laughs> do I want to see it? No, but I kind of weirdly like it. There are 17 unique arts. Oh, what? Okay, it's like less than I okay, thought. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, it depends. Like, sometimes they have different frames, but the same artwork. So That's true. How, how do you, yeah. Oh, to unique me, that makes arts. Like a huge yeah, there'll difference. be loads more printings. Yeah. Okay, I, I, okay, I agree. I kind of like the Fallout Tamagolf. I don't know why, but... <laughs> I, I can't believe that Fallout Tarmogoyf. <laughs> like, remember when we were talking about Tarmogoyf 10 years ago? Like, hey, do we have the new Fallout Tarmogoyf? No, yeah. I have the whatever, Adventures of the Forgotten Realms Tarmogoyf or whatever it's called. It's like anyway, a now. can we talk about true temporal mastery in that time? Yeah. I was about to ask you, like, how, how are they performing? Because bad. I, they... I, I don't think they're good. Is it bad? Okay. Well, okay, like, so I've seen some streams where they actually were like obnoxiously good, but obviously think... it's quite situation dependent I, I i think they're I, I cannot imagine that that the cost of, of fitting a volcanic island in this deck and making those temporal masteries into fourth aerolingus is not worth it because the temporal mastery like if you're hard casting it it's you're like you're already winning the game because you have seven minutes. i mean honestly if, if the best you can do right now is hard cast temporal mastery i think you you it's actually not that great well well here's honestly. the thing is like i actually didn't like i miracled it like just totally randomly sometimes and i was like this isn't like that good because it's explore, it's, yeah it's literally explore because your deck does, like unless you have uro in play already mm-hmm. you're not actually getting anything out of the extra turn like it it maybe it maybe like frees up some mana for a turn and like lets you sequ- sequence your tap lands greedily because you have a, a free turn it's so, like i'm not saying there's no upside or anything but like i was i was shocked with how poor T- literal time lock was sometimes and i was like i guess because your this deck is so reactive it's just like right well I, all my hand is reactive i have nothing to take advantage yeah. of this te- tempo yes for. exactly I, I guess the, the the whole idea is like you, you get some marginal value here and there like it triggers beanstalk it's blue and that's pretty much it because otherwise you could play what, what's it called not explore that's also blue that uh growth spiral Spiral. Spiral, basically but the card that the, the whole stock. world wants to be good but it's terrible <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's such a cool card uh yeah it, it's very cool it, yeah but see i was yeah, i dude, was very medium on the temporal masteries and in, in i'm very plan. medium on that kind of deck i don't want this kind of deck to be good yes most, I, most importantly just because you can't really fight it that, that's the most annoying part yeah i i think this deck is like i, I was saying this on on twitter in a conversation with callum i don't know like last week or something it's like I, if these decks are really good in the format it's like 
the format is like Oko tier miserable, in my opinion. Thank you, thank you. Well, what have I been saying? Like, Callum, you remember this, right? I agree. I keep yeah, saying yeah. when control is like tier one, re like hard control is really good in Legacy, something is either broken or miserable. So, like, well, something is wrong. I'll push like, back against that because I don't mind control good being good. Like, I said, just say, for example, I know it's not good, but let's say like a standstill blue eye deck was good, or like Jeskai, or so. What, it's just this style of like tap out everything draws a card that's miserable it's, it's i mean that's okay yeah i i think the the incentives that beanstalk creates are really bad because it just makes the reason this deck gets away with like playing a bunch of tap lands is because so many spell the all the spells are like zero mana it's it the play pattern of just like beanstalk force 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 you know just you is, is awful force. It's so bad. It's yeah. it, I I really disliked how much I was like, okay, turn two being stuck with with force backup is just like. So I found that ludicrous. when I face it, when I face it and they tap out for turn two beanstalk, I feel like the force is game is game basically a lot of the time. Yes, yeah, because the tempo swing of like, yeah. oh, you force my thing, you didn't lose a card. Now next turn you're gonna draw three more extra untap, cards. Play another, yeah. play Leyland binding. It's just it's just then over. Yeah, it, I I, uh, I really dislike yeah, okay. being stuck. But Bo Bowmasters is is the hero of the format in a weird way currently. It is, it is. Yeah. Uh, but I also understand the the arguments for like just in terms of density of like Bowmaster people getting really sick of it. But I know this this is getting like towards the discussion that yeah. everybody's tired. This, this tired is basically of. giving me like kind of like miracles PTSD in in the sense that I I always kept saying like if something is this good and this broken, the only way that you're able to fight and push back against it will be equally broken and stupid and boring. So, yeah, yeah that's, yeah, so that's like, how I feel about it. My, like, my gripe is basically that, yeah, the, this this deck's really obnoxious. I guess that's that's the draw to it for a lot of people. Like, a lot of people want to play obnoxious decks. They want to be, like, yeah. the obnoxious guy. Like, not, in, like, character-wise, but, like, deck-wise. Yeah, I mean, that, that's that's true. But, like, there are, there are definitely, there are much cooler control decks that could exist, and... I'm sure, and I, I'm sure, like it's got to be kind of frustrating for like the control enthusiasts, because. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, well I, I just like, when you talk about control enthusiasts, I, I, I imagine I only have the worst thoughts. <laughs> like, just like a, I don't know, <laughs> there's, heroin, there's, there's a lot of them there. Abuse yeah. enthusiasts or something. I, I, don't I know. like I, I I like a lot of control decks actually, but I I just can't imagine really loving the this deck because, it, the. The Beanstalk decks have like none, like imagine like in the mirror when you just like, oh, I'm, we're all going to, all the fighting is going to be over our two mana card advantage permanent that but arbitrarily draws know. cards. Yes. Yeah, that, that's a weird thing. Whenever like like a deck is, is in, in a position it, like this, the only thing I ever it. love about it is, is the mirror. That's that's the one where I feel like, okay, this is really cool. Let's, let's try this no, out. Like, this, no, the mirror, this mirror is, is bad. I know with lots of other mirrors, you'll let like the card advantage resolve and you fight over the threats. This one, the Beanstalk is the threat. Like whoever has the most Beanstalk powerful. wins. Yeah, whoever has mm -hmm. the most Beanstalk wins. It's, it's not. Okay. I mean, maybe some people enjoy it, but it's definitely not for me, at least. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's very reductive. Yeah. Very much so. Uh, guys, do you want to talk about another deck in that challenge? Hell yeah. In yes. that showcase challenge. <laughs> because the, the deck that <laughs> was the most exciting to me uh, is, well, I, I, I call it like proper affinity by x -Y. Yeah. Did you so see I'm... that deck? I, I thought mm. it was like a, a one of a kind, but then I looked at a couple of other results and I remember, dude, I, I've seen these cards before. Like, and people actually play this deck. Is, is this actually what it goes by, Affinity? Not really. Like, so basically, x -Whale kind of... This this is a bit different. So x -Whale played a mono-blue version. Um, uh, Matt, who is punishing Waterfalls, he won the challenge, like, I think the day a day or two before, with a similar list, but he was playing uh, Scorpec Lord as well. So yeah, yeah, I saw that one, the black one, right? Yeah. The, yeah. the Warmer 40k thingy that, like, grows all of your artifact creatures. Yeah, so... As a fan of like artifacts and constructs and stuff, I like immediately loved the deck and bought everything <laughs> that I didn't have already. And I've played both versions online a bunch, and I, I like the the one with Scorpet Lord a lot more, I think. Giving so Scorpet Lord, for anyone that doesn't know, is two and a black, so three mana. It's an artifact creature. It's a three two with menace already itself, I believe. That could be wrong. And um it gives all your other artifact creatures plus one plus oh and menace. And the decks, why it's like the deck has come out recently is Simulacrum Synthesizer. So this is in like standard and Pioneer and Modern as well. So I think most people will know it already, but if not, it's an artifact for three mana, two and a blue. When it enters the battlefield, you scry two. 
And whenever another artifact with mana value three or greater enters the battlefield under your control, you create a construct token, just like uh, just like Saga. So it's a plus and plus one for each artifact you control. So it's going proper affinity with the OG Frogmite, which is so fun and is actually incredible in the deck. Like it's, really, it's hilarious, right? We talk about yeah. all this broken stuff and like how all the old creatures they don't really come back, except for I guess uh, like Goblin Lackey or something, <laughs> uh, Goblin Matron we talked about. Yeah, yeah. and then. I look at that list and I'm like, okay, okay, are there any, any of the OG affinity creatures in there? And it's just like fucking Frogmite. Yeah. Like how? How? It, a also, also, Sojourner's Companion is just a slightly better Mirror Enforcer. Yes. Yeah, so because Sojourner's Companion cycling, is right? Mirror Enforcer that can like artifact land cycle. Or two. It's, so when I was playing both versions, the seven mana like is a bit of a cost. It can be there in your hand. That's The land cycling was actually pretty relevant. It's quite nice. Hmm. But... Yeah, the, the synthesizer spits out like a ton of constructs and like can kill so quickly. And the constructs can just be blocked and stuff. So the Scorpet Law just pushes it to another level. And I don't know, you're making constructs of sagas as well. So the Scorpet Lord also triggers the, the synthesizer itself. So it kills very fast once that comes down. It also has Unearth for two and a black, I forgot to say. So I really like the version with that. My feeling on the deck is it is very powerful. It's got like the other uh, usual kind of affinity cards where it's got thought monitor and stuff my feeling is the deck it's not, it's not playing kappa cannoneer right the deck card's just that yeah the, well that regard. I, i've run into versions that are playing kappa cannoneer yeah i, th I think but they can you i think the idea is that you need you need to play more of the zero mana artifacts which can overexpose you to some things that this version of the deck otherwise kind of gets to dodge so like stuff like chalice on zero which used to be like quite strong as a cast is not particularly strong against you know this kind of newer affinity deck because instead of you know like it's got pedal and mox opal but it's not like it, it doesn't have like eight baubles on top of that that you know the emery engine really wanted and kappa cannoneer wanted so i think that's that's part of the strength of the newer build is that it's better against chalice on zero and it's it's like it's like a less hateable eight cast right because it's it doesn't care about uh about drawing cards as much or doesn't care about bowmasters yeah. as much it doesn't care about Charles as stuff. much. Doesn't yeah. really care about that much. Yeah. So it's more just like uh it's, it's basically like the the OG the OG affinity deck, as you mentioned, right? It, it's when's like, Ravager? When, when are we gonna get a Ravager in here? <laughs> yeah, Ravager and like, the old, plating. The old affinity was like Ravager and Plating. Well, yeah, exactly. So it plays quite differently. Like it, it actually starts the game quite slow. It can have some fast draws, obviously. The the mono blue one from Xwell has patchwork automatons, which can get out of control quickly by don't remember if Matt's one did. I'll be honest. I think it did, but I I have no. I've I've watched uh I watched X Cloud play this deck a little bit in a prelim, and I watched somebody else play. I forget who. I I will say the patchworks are noticeably worse uh compared to A cast, just because you mm -hmm. you like again it's the zero man artifact thing, but it's also just like you're casting uh the deck is like less permanence that you're actually casting because like the whole point is that you're casting like one permanent but then it generates a second one with the synthesizer mm -hmm. so it's like the the can the the automatons don't get nearly as out of control as they did and yeah, the synthesizer is actually kind of crazy like when i look at this card this almost feels like like beanstalk and it <laughs> yeah. can go completely out of control like rather quickly well this one finishes the game so fast that you don't see it go like so crazy <laughs> you don't sometimes. even get to, to get the second one it's just like the game ends before you can even like leverage the second one yeah <laughs> it, it doesn't protect itself in the same way and it's it's also i don't know i don't mind i don't mind the synthesizer i think i think it's no. it's a, a pretty reasonable card as far as you know as, insofar as there's reasonable cards in legacy <laughs> i thought this was like the, the the one the card that actually win the game with because i don't think you're gonna win the game like by casting frog mites and and mirror enforcers you do win the game with this a lot but don't underestimate oh, just really like a, do? don't underestimate a saga and then like um yeah. the scorpec lord to give him the menace like saga tokens with menace is terrifying yeah they we should also mention quickly. i think uh, an important addition is the lava spur boots yes um has like sped up the clock on the saga decks quite massively a bit. massively yeah i think this card is um, like insane in legacy i think it's by far the best card in the set and it's just like an, an auto shoe in for most saga decks so especially these aggro affinity decks that win with combat um it's amazing and painter i've loved it constantly it's not going to be in everything like i don't think it goes in cephalid breakfast and may probably not lands like you know hasty merit age sounds nice and stuff but probably not I have, there i've seen um, i've seen we, the green we talk about that in a moment 
I, yeah. I know, I know people have it, played uh, it, but like it does. I don't think Kavri just won the the energy 5k in Minneapolis with yeah. Lava Spar Boots. That's actually why I put it in the in the show notes up here. Oh, okay. Cool. Oh, we're, we're jumping all over the place from yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's fine it's fine <laughs> but I, th I think this this is the deck that uses probably the best because this yeah, deck yeah. can be aggressive it it plays in a weird way because the first couple of turns don't feel aggressive and then it kills you in like two turns yeah kind of out of nowhere I will, it feels I, like. I will say as a as a blocking enthusiast you know the the caster of mog war marshal i am appreciating <laughs> eight eight constructs that i can block instead of kappa cannoneer so i'm a little happier <laughs> with that yeah <laughs> i'm just happy to not see a eight dragons with flying yeah, yeah, okay. Seven, seven, yeah, yeah. That's fair. It's fair. As a blocking enthusiast, kind of in a similar way with like fable tokens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, or, or like, like um, was it Brayer's Apprentice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, so how legit is this deck? So it's like, like, Callum, you already ordered the cards, so I guess it's kind yeah. of legit. So I think it's good. I think it's quite easy to hate on a bit. It's got weaknesses, but like different weakness to eight casts. So I think it doesn't mm -hmm. like ensnaring bridge. It doesn't like a kind of fast combo. It's like so there's metallic rebukes there's forces in the sideboard there's ley lines so like it absolutely has game against combo but again i'm just always usually speaking as painter like just playing painter into grindstone or vice versa like they often just die to that i think so, it's, it's it's sorry calm i just yeah, wanted to note on the on x whales sideboard uh it kind of mm -hmm. it is telling of the <laughs> the feared matchups with the four mind break traps is there four? Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I have one of Emrakul, which also like helps yeah. okay. like, get, get in another turn against Painter. You know what? That makes a ton of sense. I think maybe the list I've seen in the sideboard wasn't built with enough respect for the bad matchups then, like as people play it out. And it's not really weak to Meltdown. Like, I think we might see the control decks move to Seeds of Innocence rather than Meltdown if they were playing Meltdown. And then mm -hmm. Delver, like, you need to get to uh, four mana to get the Synthesizer. And like I you're not you really gonna melt to, down. I think you try to pyroblast the synthesizer. Yeah, that makes sense. Fine, but like if you get like Sojourner's Companion and Frog Mites and stuff, like meltdown might not be good enough to quell the tide. What are your thoughts on Null Rod versus this deck? I think uh, it's very good, right? It is good. They you do. Can, play, like, it's they play good enough to bring it in lands. because it hits the yard effect lens. Yeah, but yeah. other than that, it's like not crazy good. Like it would be against other well, proper artifact decks. Well, I I feel like it's. I, I mean, if they get out in front of it, it's not going to do anything. But I think it's pretty significant that if you land a Null Rod, the deck can no longer cast Synthesizer or Thought Monitor unless they draw their one of Island and like there's like two Ottawaras. Oh, you're, you're cutting off blue? Yeah. Ah, okay. So there's a, like a one of. Okay, okay. Now I see. I, I would guess, that but you, you guys yeah. probably played this more. I would guess that like Synthesizer comes out like quite like before Null Rod, unless I guess you got it in the, in the opening hand, and even then it's like tricky. Well, just like but, from looking at deck list, I haven't really played against I this think, yet. I think it's just tricky because it's like which Null Rod decks we're talking about. Because a lot of Null Rod decks are Ancient Tomb decks, but, you know, it, it kind of... But it's more like we're, we're probably talking about Collector Oof anyway, not Null Rod. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Collector Oof definitely. Um, but I feel mm -hmm. like the, the the Zenith decks, the Green Sun Zenith decks, Dom Harvey, honorable exclu exclusion of this is like, they're, they're largely not showing up that much. I feel like we're at a relative low of Collector Oof. I, I think what, like some shifts we'll see. If this deck stays like being played and stuff, we'll see the scam lists go to Esper. So they get Pest Control is probably a good addition for that anyway, but then Serenity is good against this deck as well. Yeah, Serenity seems nuts. I think the deck is easily hateable enough. It, it's it didn't feel crazy to me either. It felt strong and it felt like it can be a kind of tier two deck for now. And if it goes into tier one, then I think it's quite easily hateable back down a bit. Yeah. But it's doing some powerful things and it's cool and interesting. Yeah, I think it's okay. a, a okay. logical progression of the eight cast shell. I think this deck is completely busted and it's the best thing you can do in the format. <laughs> I just concluded that. That's, that's yeah. pr pretty much a given. You, what you guys what card us. gave you that impression? Um, Ancient Tomb. Yeah, fair. It is the yeah. best card in the format. So. <laughs> <laughs> very much so, very much so. <laughs> so okay. Guys, you, we already mentioned uh, Dom and Dominic Harvey. He actually, he not only won the Legacy energy 5k in minneapolis he the day before also won the modern one this he's is such just a beast like, he's just he's like, pretty good he's just insane at magic like he, he tweeted something like you know i won the energy 5k and then i won the energy 5k I, actually the 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 one the day before was i, I believe a 10k even Sounds so right. yeah he just like wins everything like i came into like i was ready to do the first round of commentary for legacy but you know sometimes we have to do like the the like semi-finals or finals from the previous day if it goes too late 
So I sit down and I'm like, oh, modern, like who's in the finals? And of course, Dom is in the finals and he's playing Amulet and of course he wins. <laughs> and then the next day he sits down. I think he had a, like a buy for the first round and then he goes on to win with Lance. Just like straight up Lance with Lava Sparrow boots in, in it. It's just, yeah, I, I did not expect that. Like, I, I appreciate I that he always, he always sticks to his craft. Like he's played Amulet forever. He, he's from England and so... I, I never met him when he was living here, but he was always at loads of the same events I went to playing Modern. And he, he played Amulet since it was a thing at the very beginning of Modern, basically. Or he is from England because modern. I know he's he's like Canadian, right? He lives in he's, Canada, but he's, he's, he's English. I think he's naturalized Canadian now. I remember, I, I vaguely uh, okay. recall something so from the, his Twitter. They, they used like the Canadian flag, leather. but maybe they just like stole him away or something. Fair enough. But he he lived in England and was born here, I'm pretty sure. He also sounds very British. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he's been playing uh, Amulet since, like, you know, uh, they had, what's the thing that, Summer Bloom and stuff. And yeah. Oh, when it was, like, completely nuts, super broken. Yeah, but he's played it forever, so he just knows it inside out. And then Lands, he's kind of always played. I think he dabbles with depths as well. But he's a, a non-basic Lands enthusiast, basically. <laughs> Dude, all, <laughs> Which all I think my favorite cool. types of players. Yeah. Control enthusiasts, non-basic Lands enthusiasts. <laughs> Jul <laughs> Julian, you want basic forest, Basic planes, Kosali Pride Mage. That's what legacy Dude. should be. <laughs> no, I want. I want to go turn one noble hierarch, turn two Vendillion click, take away whatever you have, attack you for four on the third oh, okay. turn. Is yeah. click better than pancake flipper? It's not even close. Like click is completely busted. <laughs> like click, click, click is like is flying right. Flying is better than life link. Mm. Huh? Okay. Like in a race, okay, okay, I can see it. But you can, you can always click away the pancake flipper. You know that's how it works. <laughs> so it wins. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, I'm heads convinced. Up. Uh, I think that card is actually still like kind of legacy power level, but uh, what mm. the Vendillion click? Vendillion click? Mm, no, it's not. The, I mean, Brazen Borrow is better, of course, but is there I, any I, creatures in the format that deal damage, like one damage or an ETB or something? Yeah, okay, okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> it needs Shroud or something. Yeah, okay. Click with or Shroud. Toughness or something. Yeah, yeah click with Shroud. Yeah, <laughs> protection from creatures. Uh, True Name Nemesis. Yeah, <laughs> protection Evil. from creatures and flying. I guess it makes it so that you can block. Okay, okay, yeah. I, I just invited invented a better. Remember you should work for R and D for sure. Uh, dude, if I ever did, like it was be, would be all that glorious. No, uh, seriously. Uh, you guys but, want to take a look at the other decks in the deck in the top eight? Yeah. Because... So just just like I'm just looking at Dom's deck. So it does oh, have okay. a copy of Lava Spell Boots, as you said. I'm interested to know how it is because I've seen it in lands already, and it can be cool. Like it obviously like makes the the curve, I mean, the clock, sorry, of the constructs much faster. It can, like, give you a hasty Merit Lage. But I feel like lands is still a control deck, and especially with the Force of Resistance, like, you don't need to be a turn faster if you're in control and winning the game. I actually kind of disagree with saying that this is a control deck. I think this is, like, the okay. least controlling version of lands I've ever seen. Um, because if you look, we've only got, first of all, there's no Tabernacle. Mm -hmm. That's uh, actually fascinating. Yeah, he he's basically he's hybridized the green white depths and green white lands decks because he's got the four reclaimers like green white devs does, but he doesn't. He got the knights and then he has the explorations and and loams uh, of lands and then so so he's kind of like made the room for the saga package within green white depths, or you can kind of think of it. He made the space for the reclaimers within mm -hmm. lands. You know, either way. But he but he also like a lot of lands players have a lot more utility stuff kind of strewn throughout where here it's it's very clear what the game plan is we got four of saga four thespian stage four dark depths four dark depths makes a statement and also we got three abamayas and two ancient tombs to back it up so this is like this is the fastest and, and this is a jury step and it's a jury step to protect it exactly so this yep. is like the greatest capacity to make a fast merit leech of like any of the land shells I've seen in quite a while. Yeah, yeah and it also it doesn't really toy around with like Rashad and Port or stuff like that. Like it, it still has two mazes, I guess, which which is yeah. fine. But other yeah, than but that, good argument, very well made, Eli. I'm I'm convinced. Yeah, it's a dark <laughs> deck. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, cool. I didn't I didn't really clock that. So yeah, the boots actually makes a lot more sense here. That's cool. I'd love to know how many times you hasted Merit Lage, but I think just giving Reclaimers haste and ward is pretty cool as well. Yeah, yeah. But, but also just also like the construct construct. saga. Yeah, just you know construct. Constructs yeah. attack with both for like five is like putting people under the gun. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. I think this is this is pretty innovative then. Like yeah. cutting the tabernacle, no one would ever dream of. Yeah. And also, no, no Caracas in the main deck either. That's in the sideboard. Mm -hmm. hmm. So it's cut like the cost of the deck in half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not I mean, not wrong. <laughs> pretty cool. Yeah, very cool, very cool. I love it actually. I feel like you. Yeah, I mean the spheres 
kind of feel i guess they work they they cause a big divide in the lands i know i really? I, 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 yeah. I thought that like like pretty much every time i see lands like i want to say this uh, for some decks i'm like the outsider looking into them and then people tell me oh you know inside this community of decks of players of a certain deck we has like this huge divide and then i look at it from the outside i'm like dude whenever i see for example a land deck doing well it's always four spheres like where, where, where is the divide? wide the divide wide like good players versus bad players or like i don't <laughs> want to insult anybody who's not playing spheres but okay anyone but, not playing spheres is bad you heard it here <laughs> I, I just feel like like there's no divide that's just like people who are not playing the best list uh i yeah. i understand the arguments against sphere and i actually sympathize quite a bit with them it sounds like you don't agree with them i can say that uh, well no no no. like i i actually i lean towards most of the time sphere is bad oh so you you never want something with lens <laughs> that's true <laughs> uh but at the same time i think i think there is sort of a, a clear archetype shift going on here where like maybe if you're playing lands more like a control deck and you've built it like that the spheres aren't going to work out so well because the game's going to drag on. Whereas this is like really trying to get at people and if you're going to go sphere and then Saga Construct Construct attack you, you're still under my sphere. You can't do anything. Yeah, it's um, actually a tempo card in this build, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I remember Ali wrote like an article. as well, yeah. Uh, Ali wrote an article about like how sphere is a tempo card, which sounds hilarious, but... No, it makes sense. Yeah. But I understand his perspective, yeah. I mean, the tempo card in that case is, is like Mox Diamond or Ancient Tomb, and then Sphere yes. makes it. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All the Sphere You're arguments. using a tempo capacity then, I guess. And again, like, like you said, with the four depths, four stage, three Evermire, like you're opening up these draws, which is like play a Sphere, then just flop your three lands on the table after that. And yep. Like they can't tap out. They need to leave up two mana for swords and stuff. It just lets you control that a bit more. Yeah, that's that's the, my initial idea. Like when I saw the, the Lava Spur Boots, I thought it basically makes it so that you you can create scenarios where you don't have to pass the turn, and you 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 can basically like know that this is what I have to beat, this is what I can beat right now, and I don't need to like deploy my land, hope they like don't draw another wasteland, pass the turn, and also like I don't want to make a creature like the the Mark Lage on my main phase because they they might have I don't know leyland binding does that work I guess it does. Mm -hmm. uh, so I f I f but I guess they could still have that, but they might be tapped out. It, it feels like a lot of times. You, you feel kind of safe as the opponent when it's the, the lands player's turn because you know at least even if they make the token, you're still going to get another turn. So you, you play a little bit more like too relaxed and like the presence of Lava Spare Boots makes you, either you're not aware of it and you, you get got by it or it makes you play more conservatively and, and you like fall behind that way. So I, I kind of like that it's there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to look at a. I'm seeing if Dom posted his matchup spread on Twitter, but I don't see it because I think that would be informative. Uh, I, I I'm pretty sure he played against Delver the last five or six rounds in a row. Yeah, I recall seeing a, an absolute ton of Delver. Uh, yeah, I, I I just heard it on commentary, but it was like he played six to win. He played Delver six times in a row or something <laughs> like that. So that's pretty sick. Yeah, I mean that. I mean he he. Uh, I mean, the dark depths plan makes perfect sense against Delver, right? Because if you mm -hmm. if you go if you go sphere into a fast depths, then like, what are they? They're gonna cast their three mana brazen borrower somehow. Like, <laughs> I'm looking at the rest of the top eight. Like, they all have one. You, and you wanna see what Dom played against? Like, we have the powers. You got it. Yeah, cool. this is like public information, but I, I got it like on the tournament control. I guess I, 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 I guess I just I just said that, but then I also I also know that the lands players board out sphere against Delver. So <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I think he probably did in most okay. of those matches. But so first round he got a buy. Nice. Second round, he won against Grixis Delva. Third round, he won against... Oh, he lost to Five Color Control. Mm -hmm. Then he uh, won against Grixis Delva. Then he won against Storm. Then he won against Timor Delva. Then he won against Grixis Delva. And then the last round of Swiss, he won against Grixis Delva. <laughs> <laughs> then the quarterfinals, he won against Naya Depth. Okay. In the semifinals, he won against Is it Delva, <laughs> and in the finals, he won against Timo Delva. Dude, <laughs> <laughs> you guys were right. Like your guesstimate was pretty, pretty spot on. Like Delva all day. And yeah, probably in spite of the spheres. So that's yeah. cool. I think I, I heard Nexa, maybe from him on Twitter or something, where he said against uh, Storm, he got so lucky they kind of were about to kill him, and then he just like made a turn two marital age and attacked with it. It was like, well, I've got a turn three killed. Can you kill me faster? But they probably kept a hand with like more discard or whatever. Something like that. 
but kind of want to play this deck now. Yep, same. <laughs> it's really cool. <laughs> I've, I've always got a soft spot for lands. I like I like playing the more controlling versions, but there's a lot of big appeal to just making Meryl Ages at the moment. Cool. So another shout out goes out goes out to everybody's favorite Murfolk player Nikachu, who actually went six and two. We had him on in the feature match earlier, uh, I think like round two or something. If you want to look it up later on. And he almost got the top eight. Like, I think he, he got a second loss, like, in the pen ultimate round or something. And yeah, it looks like he's managed... in top 16 on Goldfish. Or, I mean, uh, on MTG top eight. He managed to beat... I actually wrote it down. Perfect. So he managed to beat Dragon Stompy, Blue Black Rescaminator, Painterless Painter, as I call it. Like, this new eight Goblin deck. Uh, Lance, Blue Black Shadow. And he lost to Ragdoll much twice. Mm. Is Merfolk well, back? Lord of Atlantis is still getting it done. It's, it's kind of funny, kind right? Of. <laughs> we, we, we did an interview with Energy after him, after he won the match. And we talked about, like, all all of the new cool Merfolk that we played in 2010 and that made, like, Merfolk or T1 deck back then is gone. Even Silver Gill Adept is gone. Oh, my God, yeah. But uh -oh. Lord of Atlantis is still around. Like, everything is out, but Lord of Atlantis is still a card. Just love uh, that. Yeah, that's... Wow. I'm looking at this list. This is pretty cool, actually. I think uh, I watched Nikachu play a little bit of Modern in the the tournament series that Honorog's doing. I was actually pretty impressed with some of the stuff he had going on in the, the Modern version. This version looks less tricky because you've got, like... Like, in the Modern version, it was doing crazy stuff, like turning opponents to... It's like the, the changeling that taps, that can, like, tap to turn things different to a type. But all it was oh, doing yeah. was tapping to activate this enchantment that's, like... Whenever your creature taps, you get a one-one uh, token. Oh, that thing! Token. Oh, I, yeah. I know exactly. I can see the artwork in front of me. I don't yeah, know I don't know what's what called. called. It's from Ixalan, but he was doing mm. that and just like going completely nuts with it. it. Was really cool. I'm actually. It's pretty exciting that to see Rashad and Doc Hand as a four of in this legacy deck. You know why it's there? It's basically there because it's a one-two. Yeah, yeah. That, I believe. I believe that. that. That's what he said. Like that's also why he cut Silver Girl Adapt. That's like why a lot of other stuff isn't there. So yeah, he's very. Uh, trying a lot to touch uh, bombers does. Yeah, it's like Murfolk is yeah. it it is incredibly aggressive. You don't respect it because you're like, oh low Murfolk and then you'll be attacked by like two five fives on turn three very often backed up by disruption and stuff. It's it kills you or I can play this like kind of slower game where it's got big creatures and then it just like puts two lords on the table so you're like got some removal proof and the tie shaper makes something an island and then you just die and you can't block. Yeah. It's... Like the the island walk did so much work. Like it's actually yeah. insane how much work the island walk yeah, did yeah. there. I mean that's assuming your opponent doesn't have islands, which happens a lot in legacy. So Yeah, I mean you also got tie shaper, right? That's what I mean. You either tie oh, shaper yeah, yeah. or oh, if yeah. they Otherwise, if they're playing Delver already, it's... I noticed this deck actually doesn't play days. Like usually in the past, like Murfolk always played days. I love the no dayses in this deck. Mm -hmm. Honestly, that makes so much more sense. Like the, just in the way you want to sequence your lands here, I feel like days is going to be inherently awkward in your you know Ottawa or Wasteland Cavern game deck. There's only eleven islands. It's not that many. Uh, and yeah, you also you, unless you got wild, you also can't really abuse the tempo advantage. All exactly. That much. Exactly. Yeah. 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 This is like. Murfolk has always been one of those decks where it's like days was there just because it was there. Also, like it started out as a standstill deck, and then like people were like, "Yeah, we can play the longer game, maybe." It's just like it was a little bit all over the place. And I also love that there's no Chalice of the Void anymore. I always hated Chalice and Murfolk, which is like, no, I don't want to cast Chalice. I want to play another creature, and I want to win on turn five. I don't want to like. There are two chalices in the second sideboard. turn. So yeah, I mean, in sideboard it makes sense, but yeah, in the main yeah. deck I, I hated that so much. When they had like four chalices in the main, it's just like guys, what are you doing with your life? Goblin, <laughs> goblins was the same way. Goblins players with with main deck chalice always kind of bothered me. It's like, what do you, what do you really hope? You're just like hoping that you're on the play and you like happen to play against Storm and you have your chalice in your opener and yeah. like, like basically cheesing out a win. Yeah, and like yeah, it's nice to cheese out wins, but like it does compromise the integrity of your game plan if you build your deck this way. By the way, Eli, um, I re just remembered I looked at our show notes. I didn't ask you the most important question for any guest. Oh, shit. We, we'll do that to what after at the end of the show. Okay. We, like, you, you can already <laughs> think about your answer. You don't know the question yet, but it's, it's okay. a very <laughs> meaningful question. Did cool. you guys see any other cool mono blue decks in the top 16? Uh, maybe. <laughs> oh, we got high You're asking a question like we should know. Oh, yeah. no. Oh, no. James oh. Robertson. High tide with four sapphire medallion, four mines desire. It was more like Springtide, basically. Like, I, I mentioned that on the, on the cast, right? When, when you look at the deck list, it, it also has, like, Snaps and, and Cloud of Fairies, if I remember yeah. correctly. Yeah, yeah. So this is, like, built to be faster, I guess. And a Geralt the Flesh Rite. 
you got to be a special kind of crazy to see the bowmasters in like 50 percent of legacy decks and you're like i know what the format's not ready for <laughs> high tide <laughs> high tide with cloud of fairies that you're trying to bounce <laughs> <laughs> yeah nope. they just will never have it and i will always have it yeah i love it absolutely love it i mean yeah lost uh i think a win in as i was told they were six one one on camera that's that's really impressive honestly yeah it is they they played on camera against a deck with bowmasters and they just like let all these other things resolve and then held the force until the bowmasters mm. that's a lot of discipline that's that's cool yeah yeah it, there was a lot of a lot of spells where they clearly stopped and thought and they're like Oh, this like twenty twenty motor is pretty bad for me, but I can't <laughs> let the, can't let the uh, got the orcs resolve. So yeah, shout out to James for doing great with high tide. Anyway, guys, we are back. We we just looked like I want to say like two hours to figure out how a player who went <laughs> six one and one with high tide. Shout outs to dude, and now we didn't even like shout him out. I Adam, did. Got, I James shout out to James. So shout out to James who has no last name. Actually. Robertson. James Robertson. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Went six one on one, but actually like spring tide. This is this is like not proper high tide. This is spring tide. Anyway, uh, should we look forward to? Well, I, I'm not sure if we're actually looking forward to some of them, but there have <laughs> been a couple of spoilers. Some of them already confirmed. Some of them they randomly popped up on the internet, right? And we, I guess we can talk about whether we believe those cards are real. But should we first go with two cards at least? That are already out. I think that dude, I'm, I'm not even gonna try to understand the, the set symbols. Like, do you do you know what the set symbol is for the first card we got here? The first in, one is the latest big standard set, Julian. Yeah, that is it. Outlaws it, of Thunder, Thunder it, Junction. It, it, yeah. Think? Yes. That the, the pro <laughs> tour. The pro tour was yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, but like that, that set also has like five different set symbols, right? Yes, this it does. is the main one. <laughs> How would I know? How would I know? Seriously, like, I, I, on, like you guys By drafting know about it. Like, that's the only way you can know. <laughs> Guys, you know how about, like, what's it called, like, IP6 versus IP8 or something? Like, basically, when we had to increase the number of IP addresses because we were actually about to run out of them. That's exactly why I thought with different set symbols. Yeah. Exactly, right? I think we're, <laughs> we're getting to a point where it will be impossible to make new set symbols. And, it is and, confusing, though, I know. I mean, it's not only really confusing. It's, like, literally impossible to create new ones because all sh kinds of shapes we, have been we, created. We use uh, all the it, shapes. <laughs> there's quite a lot of shapes in this world. <laughs> okay, okay. But, I mean, they, they, they all went up, I would guess. Okay. But, yeah, um... Yeah, the the first one is the latest set, and the second one is the commander set for it. Thumb okay, okay, it. cool. So, do you think that, that what's it called in in such a Insatiable avarice. I don't even know what an avarice is. Avarice is it's like a greed. Oh, 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 I thought it was like the the coin. Oh, okay, no, no, okay, it makes sense. So this is a sorcery, one black, and then it has the most, the laziest. I want to say the laziest design I've ever seen on something like spree. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't even know what spree, spree it's just was. Multi kicker. Before. Yeah. yeah, but this is the laziest thing you could ever do. Like seriously, uh, like, they do I saw kicker this? with different names all the time. Well, like, so it, kicker, it, well, yeah, it's that not, doesn't mean make it less lazy. Kicker, like, this is the laziest thing I've ever seen in card design. No, 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 no. no. I, I think the the distinction is that spree cards don't have an effect outside of like their um their different clauses, whereas like a kicker card will have like a normal effect, and then you can mm -hmm. do the extra thing for kicker. With spree cards, there's there's only you have to choose one of them at least. Yeah. Yeah, if you, if basically, if you pay the mana cost, it does nothing. Like, you can do it to increase Storm, I guess, but it doesn't really do anything. So this one... You, you can't actually cast it without choosing one. But you can't choose no. one or more additional... Oh, oh, okay, okay, so... Okay, I see. I think this, this is card, just the stupidest thing. This, this card's pretty bad, I think. Yeah. So it? it's one black for a sorcery, and it has spree, as you can guess. Uh, one of the options is two colorless, search library for a card, then shuffle and put the card on top. So you can pay three mana for a, like, sorcery speed tutor that goes on top. Vampire or the other tutor. one is two black black tiger player draws three cards and loses three life so, so i've seen this like in storm lists so that, that's why i added it but okay. most importantly i added it just because i think like if you, if we like this if this is the future of card design it's just like stupid i don't know like this is this i keep going back to lazy because it is lazy instead of like designing a card which like with flavor and everything it's just gonna be like oh build your own card like whatever like play best of one so we like give you all the flex like i hate it when cards are flexible because it's just like so lazy and this is like uber but these, uber these are all like stupid. over costed effects so you're yeah. paying for flexibility this is like but a really like, weird I, I don't know why well, okay, I under I know why, but like this seems weird to play over like a dark petition or something like that. Like I know obviously it doesn't involve the graveyard, so that's why. But and basically, the idea for this, like I, I'm I'm not really talking about the effect. I don't care about how good it is and like 
whether it goes into legacy or not. Just like this whole concept of spree, I, I guess I, I you put it to like rest you've, got a, you've got a personal thing yeah. against this. Yes, because <laughs> I fine. hate it when like design is lazy, I, and this is the I laziest did, I of lazy designs bad. you can do. Yeah, I, that I, I, I don't, I don't think of it as that bad. It's, I mean, no. just like it's, it's like a split card. Basically, yeah, I think yeah. split cards are cool. They've been doing this for like twenty years. We can't. Yeah. Are we, are I think we split mad about cards split are cards? Really lazy. Yes, I am. I think they're lazy. <laughs> like I think Wizards as a whole is like really lazy about some of their designs lately. I, I don't think uh, lazy is the right term. It's just that they it is. are. It they're is. To, no, 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 no. They, they're told to produce an outrageous number of cards at an outrageous rate. That's why it's like the, the design necessarily gets work worse because there's just like an insane volume. Nah, that's not what I mean. Basically, like I, I keep going back to I want a, like a flavorful card, a card that like does something, and not like wizards being like, oh, we don't really know what what we want. Well, just this like, is like one. They give you like everything, and you decide. This is just one like, thing out of like multiple new things in the set and stuff. It's... Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. The spree is just stupid. Anyway, okay. I, I, hey, I, I fine. Keep Julian going on really, about really, really hates spree. I, I didn't, I didn't know like I, I would this. hate spree as much until right. I added. I saw this card and I added to to our things to talk about <laughs> just because I think like if if this was the future of Magic. Like, I don't think anyone's be... saying this is the future of magic. Well, it's free, so. so. <laughs> but they've been making these split cards for 20 years. Yeah. Like an invasion. It, yeah, yeah, but you, you, like you can't disagree that over the last couple of years, like Wizards has really, really pushed that thing of like build your own card. Just like we, we give you whatever you want and you just like pick instead of like but these doing cards are it bad. preemptively. Like, it's okay. It's, yeah, it's but okay I'm not talking about cards. power level. I'm talking about design. I don't think it's a new design and I don't think people mind it. I no, think. I'm not talking about a new design. Like I'm talking about like how much more that is a thing. Like that, that uh -huh. has been a thing ever since Fire Ice. Basically. An increase in prevalence. I get what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. And that that's like really pissing me off because okay. that's just like something I hate. Julian anyway. hates Spree. <laughs> okay. So apparently that card is not very good. No. That... <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I'm glad we're Going that. to another card that's apparently not very good. I guess it's Eris, Roar of the Storm. It's eight colorless, a blue uh, and a red. Legendary creature elemental warlock and it costs two less to cast for each different mana value among instants and sorcery cards in your graveyard it's a 4-4 flying prowess whenever you cast your second spell each turn create a 4-4 dragon elemental creature token with flying and prowess is this kind of like a thing in isadel i've seen it here and there not in delva but um it was posted as rug beans by sylvia wataru and i thought it looked insane at first not the card itself but i thought the shell was like wow this is so clever so it's rug beans with like main deck pyrokinesis and you got uh obviously, obviously force of wills and merc tide merc tide to proc it and stuff and then this obviously procs it as well and then you've got like force negation and lorian revealed and then lots of like one and two mana things fire ice to be a, a instant sorcery with four costs to be in the graveyard and stuff Ooh, so i was cool. like you know this is really clever and you know you can probably get four different mana costs in the graveyard and then you know play this for two mana draw off beans and you go crazy I thought the deck looked actually pretty insane. So I tried it out and I was not very impressed. And Sylvia seems to go like 2-3, three, 3-2 three, quite a lot. So I don't think the deck is... <laughs> I, I, Catching I, bullets. <laughs> I've, watched, I've watched Sylvia play... So I watched Sylvia stream reasonably often. Mm -hmm. um, and he's been playing it quite a lot. And I, I get the appeal of the deck because it's like a higher power. It's like got a, high, a higher ceiling than normal Delver decks. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of Delver players always seem to want a slightly mid rangier version of Delver to, <laughs> you know, just get a little bit ahead of the control decks because I think Delver right now can fall quite far behind against the control decks. Mm -hmm. um, and so mid rangifying a bit is like a way to get get through that, get over get over that. And especially with Beanstalk, because Beanstalk is like the nuttiest draw engine. Mm -hmm. um, the big weakness that always this basically happens every single time people cut Delver secrets from Delver is that suddenly your deck becomes bad against Leyline of the Void. <laughs> yeah, th that that happened to me, and it, this deck is so weak to Leyline because you're playing DLC Merc Tide and Eris as your threats, and then you can't even cast the Eris. You have to pitch it to everything. It's just yeah. Do you have, and, even have like ten mana sources in the deck? Probably not. <laughs> no, almost don't. certainly not. <laughs> I've noticed this against bug beans, but I'm sure it applies to this deck as well, is that um, these specific bean decks that rely on graveyard interactions to like cast an overcosted spell via delve or whatever, mostly, you know, with bug beans, it's basically all delve. It's it's because it's uh, murderous cut and murktide. With a ley line in play, it not only like cuts off a lot of their win conditions, it also makes beanstalk a worse card in general because it it just can't trigger except off of force of will. Um, 
so it weakens the deck on both on two axes so i think that's like a pretty significant hurdle for this deck to overcome yeah i agree yeah, I think you got a good point about like these these Diver decks always trying to chase the mid range a little bit too much, and then realizing ah that's that's a because I feel like even if you try to be a little bit more mid rangey against against control decks, it doesn't really work out all that well because the the control decks will still go way over the top of you. So it's rather you 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 go for something even quicker or something like super disruptive like I don't know Winter Orb or whatever you have. Mm. But yeah, the cards also in this build are very susceptible to the mid range problem. Like Pyrokinesis in the wrong matchup is just terrible. Eris, when you don't have like a, a big discount on it, is pretty bad. It's nice that it pitches things. Fire Ice is barely legacy playable, like on the face. So it's kind of like rely on the synergy of being a, a four mana card in the graveyard. So it all felt a bit like you need things to line up, and it's a mid range deck. It's just a bit. So basically the way i saw it but i mean i've never seen this in action it's like you have your one one mana mana cost right mm -hmm. on the brainstorm you have your five mana mana cost um uh, or in revealed or force <laughs> yeah. yeah and then you probably have days but i guess the, the decks you're talking about don't play days and then you're casting this for four mana this and one then does have you days, try yeah. Yeah, to these, make... these decks do play days yeah. yeah and then you try to basically like make a dragon or two and and that's yeah. Gonna the other thing I realized was like me. it's it's not good to play for, for four mana. I thought that you could do that, and you do cast it for four mana sometimes. The games do long go long, but it's quite deadly. I don't know. So yeah, especially if you want to cast days early on, and then you still want to get to four mana. It's just like yeah, mm -hmm. I can yeah. see why it's like it's kind of like a cool card, and there was a time for it in Legacy, but it's this is not the time anymore. I mm -hmm. guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So the next card that we got here, that one's. That one's terrible, right? Nether Goyf, the one mana Tamar Goyf. Are sick. you guys telling me this is good? <laughs> I don't know if it's good, but I I love it. It's cool. I love the artwork. I love Goyfs. I love Lur Goyfs. I'm I'm quite excited for this set now. I um, go ahead. I thought I thought this was insane because I was out quite drunk when someone posted it on like my local chat, and I was like, "Holy shit! It's a one mana Tamar Goyf with Escape. What the fuck are they doing?" And then it's it only counts your graveyard, yeah. but but it's. I don't know. It, it's not bad. I don't. I, my suspect is like it's not quite there. I mean, it's a it's a one mana three four a lot of times. I would guess. Yes, mm. I I think this is. I think it has potential um, yeah. because it's really good with dragons race channeler and bobble. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not having to splash green like like I know like a lot of the Delver like Rixus Delver people were trying to fit in Stalactite Stalker for a little bit and this could be sort of a better version of that effect it doesn't have evasion which is like a pretty big deal yeah. but it is like recurrable is also a big deal I feel like this is actually a bit worse than Stalker yeah okay because Stalker has menace and is a removal spell yeah, yeah Stalker's like... like super annoying like if Stalker gets out of control so quickly yeah, like it's the pressure is very real. It's a much worse top deck, though. I feel like the the st like stalker as a removal spell thing, in my experience, and I feel like it would come up against me playing goblins a lot, but it doesn't come up that often. Mm. It comes up against painter a lot. Uh, anyway, uh, okay. that's my experience. <laughs> okay, but oh, it's just like the threat of it, so you can't go for a combo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, maybe that's like more a me thing rather than the format. But I don't know. Yeah, not having evasion, being like susceptible to graveyard hate probably just those things like because delva already uses the graveyard quite a lot with the rc and Merc yeah Red, yeah again the leyline problem <laughs> yeah exactly so like another threat that uses it but as you said it is fantastic with DLC and bauble so i don't feel like it's good enough but i wouldn't be surprised to be wrong okay okay so next one I i'm not sure if the next one's real by the way this is this is just like some random scan i guess that somebody dropped somewhere is this a real card? Tarmogoyf Nest? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> this is I, like I, a clear throwback to Squirrel Nest, right? Yeah. I, I think it's from the MH3 Commander deck. And yeah, so, how do right. you still know what these set symbols are, dude? Well, I've been told. <laughs> so, <laughs> so information was transferred <laughs> from one person to another. <laughs> yeah. Is that how um, it works? Okay. Which, by the way, everyone's scared of MH3. But those cards are going to modern. The MH3 Commander cards aren't going to modern, and they're making new cards. So those are the legacy cards we should be scared of. Oh, don't oh, <laughs> okay. don't, don't okay. think about that. I feel. I basically just wanted to share this card but because this card it's just like hilarious. It's so cool. Tarmogoyfness. So for those wondering, this is like oh, it's a kindred. I guess that's like tribal, tribal mm -hmm. enchantment, kindred enchantment. Lurgoyf Aura. <laughs> so cool. Uh, and it's uh, wait, it's an aura. 
Oh, it's because you enchanted land. Okay, I see, I see. It's not an enchantment. Okay, so it's two colorless and a green. Enchanted land has one green and a colorless tap create a Tarmogoyf token. Awesome. I am just awesome. Awesome. Basically, for huh. three mana, you can make a Tarmogoyf every turn. I'm, I'm curious, uh, just with this, this uh, the Kindred on the type line, I, like, I know they're, they're changing that from Tribal. Um, I'm curious if they errata Tribal to Kindred or if they're going to be different like instances of never thought about that. types because now it's like oh now Tarmogoyf can get even bigger <laughs> i think that it's gonna be a rotat right otherwise it would have been a an even bigger deal than it already kind of was yeah yeah mm. i've got no idea if it's just a change yeah. in burbage then it's not it doesn't I'm, affect i'm pretty anything. sure yeah it's okay. just gonna get a rot like the old, old stuff's gonna get a rot what's the current biggest Tarmogoyf can get is it nine ten eight, now? Nine, eight, eight nine. nine eight nine i think with that been like with what? With battles? Uh, I, th oh. I think I think it's a nine ten with battles. Nine ten. Okay. I think you might be right. Yeah. I think I can't bother to work it out. I'm so it's two later, digits but... now. Wow. Okay, nine ten. <laughs> so it could be a ten eleven with kindred. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. But I think it's just gonna be tribal. Probably, probably. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So that card like nowhere near legacy playable, unfortunately. Even no. though it's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I think I want to say we we got the most interesting card, but oh, maybe you guys far. are gonna shoot me down. Okay. Cool. No, no. So, this is this was crazy one. So this is necro dominance. A black, a black, and a black. Legendary enchantment. Skip your draw step. At the beginning of your end step, you may pay any amount of life if you do draw that many cards. Your maximum hand size is five. If a card or token would be put into your graveyard from anywhere, exile it instead. This is basically 2024 Necropotence, right? Yep. I'm going to just go first because I have a really terrible cop out and say that I have no freaking idea. I, <laughs> I, I, this is so hard to like conceptualize and like work out the my first reaction is wow necro is broken but the downsides they've added to this like being card draw so it can get bow mastered or like stop by nars at Leavel kind of stuff the maximum hand side is big and the going to the graveyard exiling and stuff not being triggered and stuff i think the downsides are pretty significant and like more than people expect but the ceiling of this card is outrageous so i have no idea <laughs> over to you two <laughs> yeah i guess this is like so my first idea is you you dark ritual this out in the first turn right like like we used to do with uh, necropotence mm -hmm. and then like i mean it's been a long time but back then the idea was you just run out a bunch of like black knights and order of the even hand and stuff like that <laughs> yeah, no, i mean we, we, our technology has advanced at this point like we're not doing that <laughs> anymore so i guess I, we actually on that note i I know I just said over to you and I don't have any thoughts, but I do have one now. I think it's probably going to be actually quite good in the kind of mono black scam mid range decks. I can oh, see it man. there. Exactly what the format needs. Just with right? Chrome Mox and Dark yeah, Ritual to like play it quickly. Make... And then you just you just grief and snuff out and play all these silly creatures and stuff. And then you just like re you refill your hand and, and do it all over again. Yes. Oh my God. So, so this is like the, the combo enabler that just ends up being the midrange deck. This is really Necropotence all over again. <laughs> I think it could be. The, the the thing is it does like make your graveyard go into exile. Like, so if you grief follow-ups and stuff, you're not going to be reanimating and it, you can't like trigger the stalker, I think, with descend and all that kind of stuff. So there is some downsides to it, but we could see. I'm, I mean, the, I'm yeah. skeptical. Cool. Well, I don't know. I, I'm also with Calvin in the sense, like, I, I feel like I could go either way on this. I think another major downside that we, we haven't mentioned is the fact that you have to wait until your end step is like, that means your opponent gets, you know, the whole rest of your turn to, you know, force of vigor, ley line binding, you know, whatever. That's a great point. Yeah. So it is answerable before it does anything. Yeah. Because Necro is just an activated ability you can do straight away, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, um, great, great point. And I, though activated ability does raise a question, can you pithing needle this, or is no, it a trigger? You cannot, you cannot pithing needle. This is like a tri This is also like why they can't really get you like super hard with um, bowmasters, just yeah. because you know that that's so basically it triggers at the end of turn, and then as the ability resolves, yeah, okay. you pay and you draw the cards. So it's like mana bond. So bowmasters would just mean that they don't pay any life. Well. I yeah, mean, they, I mean, they might, you, you they might, might. Or they could <laughs> then take I mean, double damage. Sorry, yeah, yeah. You have to because otherwise you're never going to draw any card again. Yeah, that's <laughs> because true. Because you're going to draw <laughs> So, Bowmaster yeah. is still like super annoying against this, but it's not like, oh, you just paid 10 life. Okay, here's Bowmaster's take damage. You do, damage. You do basically it. lose on the spot if you, uh, if your opponent has a Narset or a uh, Leopold. If you do draw that many cards, yeah, you're right. I'll breach you. 
whole preacher. Yeah, you literally lose in the spot of the whole preacher. Here. So yeah, this is also, yeah, this is actually interesting because with um, uh, Necropotence, Necro doesn't draw cards. Necro puts them yeah. into your hand. So Necro actually gets around bow masters and, and all that kind of stuff. But this mm -hmm. one straight up draws cards. We don't do that like exile and then put it into your hand. Yeah, the combo would have been kind of cool if it would have been that kind of effect, right? I think it would have yeah. been really dangerous. Like yeah. extremely yeah, dangerous if it was like that, that, that's why that's what I mean by cool. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this conversation is good. It's like Eli, your point is very good about being able to then like interact with it before the end of the turn as well. But the thing is, also if they want to interact with it before the end of the turn, if you if you dark ritual it out, they would probably also two for one themselves to get rid of it, like force of yeah. figure early on. And yeah. if you didn't dark ritual it out, you, they, you I mean we don't really abrupt decay anymore. I guess leyline binding is the closest thing. Mm -hmm. Yep, besage you, oh. besage you, yeah. Yeah, yeah, was yeah. true. But that's also like kind of like a two for one. Uh, kind of, yeah, that's true. The the combo side of things, Jax has already been talking about playing it with Born on the Wind. Oh, is that like where you can like play everything? With yeah, Flash? just kill them all at once. Yeah, yeah. That was one... actually my initial idea. Yeah, so I you... stole it from Arkin. I want to say, <laughs> of course, of course, everything is stolen from him. But um, the you can either do Leyland of Anticipation, of course, or you can do the. Yeah, Born in the Wind is like one in a blue instant draw card as well, I think. And you can play cards as if they had flash. So you can play all your Lotus Petals, LEDs and stuff. But Yeah, I, I was like just like thinking, okay, this is probably gonna be some kind of ad nauseum, but it's just like no, this is not this no. is not how it's gonna work. Born of the wind is just like way better. Yeah. yeah but, your uh, both of your points is maybe even a bit lower in it. So I think I think the downsides are pretty legit. We'll see. Yeah. Okay, so here's the last card we wanna talk about. Flare of Denial. It's an instant, a colorless, a blue, and a blue counter target spell. So right now it's just cancer. But you may sacrifice a non-token blue creature rather than play this spell's mana cost. No, well, where are we on this? Not, Not playable. playable, right? No. I was thinking this would be insane if it said um, basically if you remove the blue part and the non-token part, so you could go like completely crazy with <laughs> Just this. sacrifice a creature, yeah. Sacrifice a creature, counter target spell. I think that would be insane. That would be like one of the yeah. best like combo hate spells for any kind of like tribal deck i don't know like, i, like goblins, I would right? play so many of that card <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 i think a lot of people would that that card would be obnoxious yeah, very I, much so. i think this is a marcus plays four in a baleful strict snapcaster deck oh my. <laughs> <laughs> for sure didn't, didn't okay, Max Torsh uh, oh. actually like do well but like baleful strict lately uh, there's th some people are playing a couple i i do I think <laughs> if this if this card has a place i think it's an alluren because it is mm -hmm. quite good with basically every card in learn, but specifically Ice Fang Quattle. Yeah, mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that. Awesome. Yeah, Ice Fang and Strix. Yeah. Yeah, cool. okay. yeah I think the card has potential. Probably not quite there, but yeah, in a, in these shells. Awesome. I think, guys, we're going to call it a day here. We're going to see how many of those cards are actually going to be good. So I'm, I'm still rooting for Charmogoyf Nest. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> this is like this, 10 years ago. This would have been like a shitty custom card or something. People are like, yeah, what's the most ridiculous thing that we can create? Like, let's make it a Charmogoyf Nest. Like kind of like a spirit manga nest, what have you. Anyway, Eli, thank you so much for joining us. And here's the question. What is the biggest animal you believe you can beat in a fight? <laughs> um, like a... I, I, we, I've got some insane answers to this. Some people have told me they can beat a bear. No, like a, med like a medium-sized dog. Ooh, is, is that like harder or, or easier than beating a cow? Um way easier account. anyway we'll find account out account on the next episode <laughs> <laughs> if you want to support the running of everyday eternal please consider leaving a review on apple podcasts or most importantly even spotify like is apple podcast even a thing i think it still is but spotify is where the cool kids are or you can support us on patreon patreon.com slash everyday eternal just like all of our supporters especially our eternal witness here supporters and we're getting so many i'm, I'm gonna pay somebody to read all of those out Anybody want to make? <laughs> so we got John Manila, Kane, Colin, Gar Colin Garassi, Alex Crow, Tim Everett, Testacular, Salvatore of MTG Chicago, Sebastian Holaga, Guillaume, Sean Dewey, Francis Cowper, Cassandra Davis, Dylan Shoemaker, Retro Shara, Tom Zischka, Benedict Gruber, and Severin Schwarzuber. And our Tamo Goyf tier supporters Scott Monroe, Evan Lazar, Tom Hepp, Ian Seifeld, and Colonoscopy again. Did I have you in both of those? No, no, Colonoscopy is on our Tamo Goyf tier support here. Yeah. Awesome, guys. Thank you so much. See you again next month. And yeah, I, I still had spree. It's the stupidest mechanic ever. <laughs> Thanks Tell for us how you really feel. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks you. for coming bye -bye. on. Eli. See ya.